You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television, for you, by you. Okay. Welcome, everyone, to um, National Truth and Reconciliation Day. And welcome to um, this event in honor of remembrance of all the children. Um, it's a serious time, but we also can do a bit of celebrating. Um, I'd like to introduce Artist Cooper, who is going to do our territorial acknowledgement. Um, and Geraldine Manson, who will be speaking about her new book she's launching, and she has some surprises for you. Lovely. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. My name is Ardeth Cooper. My traditional name is Kamchatsia. It's a name I hold from my grandmother, Grandma Sue. Um, she was from Souk, as was my father, and that's where I grew up. Uh, we have links to Pachidot with my grandpa, Quisto. And my mother was from Snenemo. She was a Wesley from Snenemo. So I join you in the pride and enjoyment of making this beautiful place our home. I also want to say that on this day, this sad day, that we can take some, some joy in where we find ourselves right now. I was reviewing the um, museum's um, land acknowledgement, and they start off by talking about, um, with humility, acknowledging the 10,000 years of Snenemo people being here and honoring the Coast Salish heritage here. Um, and I want to say that that's particularly gratifying to me because when I moved here some 20 odd years ago, the museum was totally focused on settler culture. And it's with such pride that I, um, I share with you that now, thanks to the work of Joan and Gloria Felix and other board members who are not here, that now they celebrate Stenemo culture. And the reason I point this out is because it's, it's one thing. It's one big accomplishment. But those are the kinds of accomplishments that we can each make in our lives every single day just by waking up every morning and deciding to um, live in a principled, aware existence. And with that, I'll hand it over to Geraldine and thank you for your attention. Uh, see Siem Mestimo, Siem Sohan, Antepatsatasia, Sinemo, Eats to Ears All, Heights Apple Consolipska Geep, on a quail, Eats to Ears All. Good morning, good afternoon. As you know, my traditional name is Satasia from Sinemo, E Quinitum Sna. Elder Geraldine Manson, and it's always, always an honor to stand before you greeting my friends, my beautiful elders here on this island. So many new friends I have connection with from coming over here so often. And thanking each and every one of you today for coming to be with us to recognize the significance of every child matters, the history of who we are and the legacy of this day. I, Geraldine, am a residential school survivor, as you know, and know the impacts of what that brings, not only to me, but to my family. But as we move forward in the future, we embrace to understand how love can turn things around and how we embrace family today. 
and but how we always remember those who never made it and those who still struggle in today's world and those who are lost on the street because of their addictions, because of who they are and not able to face and have no support to bring them to the understanding of today's world. Many of us were support where we received back in the days were beautiful community, beautiful elders who embraced us to instill this beautiful culture that we hold dear to learn how to forgive as it was not ours to hold forever, but to remember as always. So today, it's about remembering, but it's about remembering how we as individuals could support and understand those who still struggle out there and where we can fit in and help in communities, in towns, in cities, where we stand and what we can do. This island, as you know, the book I wrote, Sonemo Mokstimo, tells a few of the legacies of our ancestors. And I am so honored to have this now published and supported through the new society and how beautiful the book has come to be. So my hands are raised to the team from that office. So with that, I want to bring forward another singer, Patrick, to open us up with a beautiful song that he has in commemorating this day, Haichika. Hi, Tapka. Siam, Sokwan, Stasia. Just really grateful to be here with you, Gabriel and <laughs> Islanders. <laughs> always, always here to invite us with open arms. You know, but I came here before on the island. I want to thank Shnanemoch. You know, Shnanemoch has been my home for 23 years. And we share the longhouse now, because our longhouse in Stamenis is getting renovated. And we're sharing our home again. I heard a long time ago when they didn't have a longhouse, they would all go to our longhouse and walk down into Stamenis. Now we're, we're bunking at their big house now. So I want to say that instead of a land acknowledgement, because we're not a much squalowing, see him, not a much mustimo, sharing each other's kitchen, sharing each other's home to do our culture ways, our, our longhouse, see how ways. Just really want to thank for that. We're still working together as a people. And I, I'm gonna sing a song. It's called, uh, We Are Excited You've Come Home. And uh, I wanna say that to the residential school survivors that came home, but also helping us, us kids who didn't make it home, but help them get home in the spirit world. Um, you know, it's, you know, cause I, I said to my grandma, we need to make a song as if we had culture when those kids came home. We need to be excited that they're home now. We need to make a song for that. So that's what we did, me and my grandma. 
She can't be here today. My grandma Marguerite James Penelicut. My mom. People think she's my mom and when they ask where my mom is and I know it's my grandma they're asking. I tell them where she is. She, well, she's at home right now, not feeling well. She loves to travel, my grandma. She's all over the United States and traveling, so, but she's learning to slow down. But, you know, it's hard to slow that spirit down when you've been doing it forever. So I'm just really grateful for my grandma. Grateful for, to be here, to be with you. Uh, I think I'm not gonna use the mic to sing. So if you can hear me, you can hear me. If you can't, move up. <laughs> so I, I was gonna use the mic, but I think I won't. Hi, Chika. So it's, we are excited you've come home to the residential school survivors. That's what we're saying. My spirit is happy you've come home. Our spirits are happy you've come home. It's to honor our residential school survivors here now and the ones that are in the spirit world. So uh, just really want to explain that. You know, we're excited you've come home. Hi, Tapka Siam.
Um, I just remembered, um, you know, that first beat. Because I'm a paddler, I go on a, I go on tribal journeys every summer, and I had a vision of our kids coming in on the canoe. That's what that first beat is, right? So that's why I have that beat. So it's like bringing them home to the beach. And then the faster beat is that excitement that those um, parents, their kids are coming home and they should feel excited. You know, the reality is some of the kids didn't come home, right? They didn't. And imagine, I can't even imagine that feeling those parents had. Their kids didn't come home for 365 days, right? They missed Christmases, they missed all the holidays. Imagine that. I have a three-year-old daughter, and I couldn't even imagine someone taking my mana, my child, right? So I, I really, you know, so that's why I made that song for our residential school survivors, because we still, we, we need to celebrate some of them are still here. They're here, they're thriving, they're moving forward. But we also need to remember the ones that didn't, right? So I, I sing for here and I sing for the spirit world because we're doing that connection both. So I just really wanted to explain that. Heichka. I think it's important to kind of share a bit of my story at the age of six when I was taken. You see, I didn't know, I didn't even know this story until my aunt, because I was born in Kelp River. I didn't know my parents, and it was my aunties and that told me this story when I was older. At the age of six, I was taken, we were taken, and placed in Port Alberni Residential School, where we stayed. And like Patrick said, many didn't get to go home for holidays. I was one of them. We never celebrated birthdays, holidays. So when we were in residential school, from the age of six to the age of 12, I had no memory. It was like I had as, what do you call that? Memory loss? It was until they put me into Port uh, Alert Bay. Some of the thoughts came back, the fear, because again, my hair was cut, not a fancy cut. And the girl beside me was crying. And as I'm watching her get her hair cut, the bugs were falling out into the sink. And that's the first time I ever seen such a thing. So my hair was cut short, like a bob cut. And I was crying. And then in the evening, the girls beside me, either side of me, wet your bed, wet your bed, you'll be safe. I didn't know what they were talking about. Wet my bed. Then in the lights all went out and the girls were whimpering. And I, my heart started beating because I didn't know what was going on, because I'm new. And then I heard the girl crying. And then all I seen this shadow, this person, 
carrying the young girl into the washroom, dark, with a headlight. And then next morning, the girl was gone. So the game the next night, wet your bed. And then the fear. You can hear the footsteps coming into our space again. But this time it was by my bed. Fear caused me to wet my bed. Because we were told to wear a nightgown with no undergarments. All I remember was my blankets being taken. And lifted off. But because I wet my bed, the blankets went back on. I cried and I cried. That morning, when the supervisor came in, she stood. We all had to get up, stand by our bed and our sheet. Blankets were pulled out. She stood by me and she said, Bedwetter, you're a bedwetter, and you're just turning 12 today, you're a bedwetter. I said, what? I'm 12? I'm 12? It's my birthday? I didn't care if she was yelling at me and calling me a bedwetter. I was excited because it was my birthday, because I never knew how old I was. My punishment for that day was to gather my wet bedding and bring it down to the basement and hand wash it. Skip breakfast. But while I was down there, again, approached by this male supervisor, and again was forced. If you don't do what I, I want you to do, I'm going after your sister. I said, what? My sister's here? I didn't know that. So all these things that happened, I had to get back up and scrub the steps. We were on third floor. And we were I was giving a pail and a toothbrush and a bar of soap to scrub from top to bottom with this bar of soap and water. I'll never forget that. But it didn't matter. March 20th was my birthday. I re always remember that. And I remember meeting up with my sister in a beach where we had picnic with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And she was crying, telling me her story about what happened to her. And we cried and we cried and we said, we're going to hide. We're going to swim across to the other side. And she was younger than I. And so we hid in a bush and got dark and we see the lights. And we cried as we realized we, weren't, we couldn't make it. We couldn't swim that far. And pretty soon we seen the flashlight looking for us. And we got caught. We got punished again. I never get, get to see my sister again. We didn't get to see each other until we were released and got to go home for a bit.
and placed into foster homes. Didn't get to see no parents, no grandparents. I was so bitter. I hated the world because of what they did to us. Seven foster homes in one year. I was rebellious until I hit Nanaimo. And then I got to meet Sonamo Reserve. And I was told that was my mother's reserve. I was excited because my sister brought me. But then I met the apple of my eye, I called him. He introduced me to his mother. And over time, we continue to date while I stayed in foster home, rooted, went to John Barsby. Till the day came, I was 15, just, going, just about going to be 16. sat with his mother and said, I think there's something wrong with me. I'm sick. Can't keep anything down. I'm throwing up. She said, I think we better take you to the doctor. So she did. Dr. Dudley, his name was Geraldine. Do you got a boyfriend? <laughs> yeah. Well, Geraldine, you're pregnant. No, I'm not. I can't be. Why? Because th my friends told me that the only way you can get pregnant is if you French kiss. <laughs> and I never let him French kiss me. <laughs> Oh, Geraldine, you got lots to learn. <laughs> You're pregnant. So he told me everything how I got pregnant. I said, oh my God. So I went out into the waiting room and I told his mother and I was crying. I told her what happened and she said, oh, Gerald, oh, Jerry. She called me Jerry. Oh, Jerry, you got lots to learn. <laughs> to bring it to the nine months, because I was still in foster care, time the baby was born, my son, it wasn't a happy moment. They took him away from me and put him into another foster home. I didn't get to hold him. I didn't get to love and nurture him. That angered me so much. I ran away again. I ran right to my mother my apple on my eyes mother. She was the one I stayed with. She was the one that helped take, helped to go to the courts to get him back. It took a year, but we got him back. And she was the one that introduced me some beautiful elders to say, we're gonna get that wild stallion out of you. And we're gonna replace it with culture and who you are. Seventeen years. I was with them. Seventeen years, my mother-in-law blessed me to be who I am today. The book that I published was because of them. And she said at one of the gatherings we were in the church basement, you will be our eyes, our voice, and our legs when we can no longer do so. I never knew what she meant then. I do now.
Klimtana was her name. Yawana was another. Some beautiful elders that gave utmost sharing of knowledge that they had and instilled it with me. We walked the land, shared stories, songs, taught me how to love and trust. But the pain comes back now and then because they're not there anymore. So it's only through prayer that I'm connected to them. The power of prayer is so beautiful to our ancestors, to our elders of elders. So I am so fortunate and humble. Even though I have pain and scars from the residential school, I am blessed. This is my great granddaughter. Hi, Zepka. Hi, Zepka. Hi, Auntie. I'm Jaya. Hi, Auntie. Can I give you a hug? I didn't know I was going to speak again. Really want to thank my auntie or my elder sharing your vulnerability, your tears, your story. It takes courage takes lots of courage and strength to get emotional when you're talking about Tiger Man. You know, my brother Derek's one of my closest bros. So I really got emotional hearing that. So I love you, Auntie, and you know, I'm pretty much adopted uh, Manson. I'm always with the Mansons. <laughs> Still with them, gotta ride with my Auntie. Colleen there, Manson, Jean. She was beside me on the canoe, and we're still beside each other today. And um, so I'm really, really grateful for your family, you know, and uh, so I just really want to honor you first before I speak, you know, that you can feel that, you know, camp, you know. So, yeah. Um, I'm just really grateful for for this day. You know, I've I've been doing my own intergenerational. Must be the creator. Oh, did it die? Oh. Yes, creator. What do you want me to say? <laughs> oh, don't tell him that. Okay. <laughs> Tell them the truth. Okay. Hello. Oh. Testing, testing. One, two, three. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Actually, you know what? I'm going to sing a song for Auntie. And um, uh, it's, it's called Our Women Are Sacred. And um, I was just telling... Um, Colleen, I said, we should get together. Who wants to learn that song? I sang it first. Teach it to whoever wants to learn. And this song I'm going to sing, it's called Our Women Are Sacred. Because the, the creators tell me you should sing another song because the mic's not working. So, <laughs> so, But I've been doing a lot of my own inter intergenerational healing. You know, uh, one, of the, one of the messages that still kind of linger with our people is, I'll give you a reason to cry. It still kind of lingers in our communities, that saying. That's the impacts of residential school. So I'm, I'm not going to say that to my daughter. I'll give you a reason to cry. It's okay to have feelings now. It's okay to have those feelings and 
It's okay to talk. I'm grateful for my auntie that talked today. It's okay to talk about it now. It's okay to trust to talk about it now. You know, slowly the, the survivors are trusting us to tell their story. And it's okay to have those feelings. I'll leave it at that because I could go on for days. But I just really wanted to say that that really, that really, uh, that saying spoke to me today. And uh, I'm grateful for our late elder, Ellen White, Grandma Ellen White. I was thinking of Auntie standing beside her when she was getting mentored. And Grandma used to say, she used to come up and say, it's your turn to speak, Grandma Ellen. I said, I don't know how to speak. You're going to learn. You have to learn. Mm -hmm. So, and that's how strict she was. But she loved me. I remember her love, Grandma Ellen White. I really miss her love, and I remember her love. And I think she's with us today. She's with us today, because I've been thinking of her all morning. Grandma. And then Grandpa Ray Peter, you know, one of my mentors, too. You know, so I'm just really grateful. I'm going to sing this song. Our women are sacred, so quam quam ten squalowin, fix your spirit. Uh it ten squalowin, you know. My grandma says, stand up tall now. Scythe it, fix up now. Quam quam ten squalowin. Ha ha ha. Thun slaney, our women are sacred. That's what I'm saying in our language. And uh, we just want to sing a song for auntie and sing a song for the women and um that's what my heart is saying so Haichka. I'm not in trouble anymore. I can sit over here. <laughs> I don't have to sit behind the mic anymore. <laughs> Again, I made this song with my grandma, Marguerite James. Our women are sacred. Osiem. Quam, quam, tan, Oh. 
it don't know. <laughs> Calling all the women, stand up. All women, stand up, my elders said. I trust. Those who know the warrior song. Women's warrior song, come stand with me. Women's warrior song. grandmothers, for the aunties, for the great-grandmothers, etc. They are the ones very resilient. They are the ones that hold the foundation in every home, in every community. They are the ones. That is what the warrior song is about. Hide Well, singing the Yo Hole Hole Hola, it's the Nenemo paddle song. Uncle Gary. Uh, Uncle Gary, he, um, when I first start drumming and singing, he says, Patrick, you gotta lead us into the gathering place. That's the place at VIU. And he, uh, and I was like, oh, I don't lead, Uncle. Well, you are today. <laughs> so. I was like, okay, and you know, just I don't don't want to, but I will. <laughs> so I'll sing this song, our Snenemoch Pile song. I learned it on Tribal Journeys with uh, Colleen here, and uh, yeah, one of the first songs I sang actually when I when I started singing. Hi, Hi, Yeah. Uh -huh. 
I have to say um, that's been one of the most moving TNR days I have, ceremonies that I have been uh, witness to. And thank you for sharing so much, Geraldine. I do have what's called traditional handshakes in my hand here. And they are in honorariums for uh, the elders who've come today to speak and drum and sing for us. And um, Lorna, who's making fry bread behind us. Nadine, who's over in the blue tent doing face painting. And um, <clears throat> there's books here for you to have a look at. And Laura, what's in the other tent? Oh, we have weavers in the white tent. We have weavers, uh, cedar and wool, I think, together. Um, so um, we would, uh, I will, I would like to give out these traditional handshakes and thank all all of the people from Sanema who came today. So Geraldine, maybe you can help me. Nadine, well oh, she's back there face painting. I see. So I will take that too. Dave, Bodley. I'm sorry, this isn't in one of those beautiful embroidered um, Thank you so much, Dave. So you should. Patrick. Patrick? Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here. Lorna, who is cooking behind us. Woo woo! Yay! Yeah. Lorna! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> she is very famous now. <laughs> um, and Geraldine, I don't know how, how I can even thank you so much. <laughs> um, other things that are going to be happening this afternoon is that Dave has agreed to in the native plant trail which was just um, launched on Earth Day this year he's agreed to sit there and do some drumming so you could walk through the native plant trail and hear some drumming for a little bit L Lorna is getting her fry bread ready so that will be ready for people to ha to enjoy and um, Yes, have a look at the book tables, go get a little face painting done, and go and visit the weavers. Inside, we have a pop-up. Um, I need help with the pronunciation. A-Lelam? a lelam um, This is um, a group of designers from Sinemo who are making beautiful, beautiful clothing. I'm wearing one of the sweatshirts. Um, and so we have a little pop-up store inside the museum, so you can visit their, the things they've made, which are stunning. And the Ait Lalem, um store, you also can go online and look at all their clothing that they have. Their Aki store is on Rains Road, uh, off of, um, up in Cedar area. But it's beautiful. I um, I can't um, praise them enough for their beautiful clothing line. And uh, they we did bring just a small amount over here just to showcase some of their work. Uh, they would have came, but uh, they're so busy on the road. So yes, please take a look at what we brought. Heichka. So. Thank you very much for coming and making this celebration very Scow important. Nearly ready. Scow's nearly ready and there's fry bed ready as well. Thank you so much everyone on Gabriel.
You are watching Life on Gabriela TV, community television for you, by you. Lisa, thank you for talking with me. What did the event we just watched today mean to you personally? For me personally, I think that um, I have a great deal of gratitude for um, Geraldine Manson, who presented to us her lived experience of residential school system and her experience in Port Alberni. A lot of folks think that the day is about a historical event and they don't understand that it is actually really about acknowledging the lived experiences of people who might still be alive who might be our friends mm -hmm. who might be our family who might be our colleagues mm -hmm. and today we were given a window into those experiences and I will hold those very precious and dear because it takes a lot of strength to share and to be able to be the kind of person to share in a way that builds others up from your bad experience. And um, Geraldine has been such a cultural beacon for Gabriola. I can only see that will help Gabriola grow in its awareness of um, you know, the history of Canada and how it impacted Indigenous peoples and how we folks who are living here, whether we're Indigenous like myself or whether we're uh, otherwise settlers, how we can actually work with Sinemok in making Gabriola um, a more traditional place for Sinemok mm -hmm. and in a way that everyone's comfortable with. Yeah. Do we have a lot of growth to do here on Gabriola? Yes. In this year particularly, I think that um, many Gabrielans have been challenged with um, incidents of racism and, and incidents of hate. Um, I think that it's always going to be growth. Uh, as we have young folks coming up, they, they will need to learn and we'll need to be able to teach them. And so is it a bad thing to have a lot of growth ahead of us? Well, no, not necessarily. And it's taken 150 years um, to get where we are, so we can't get to where we want to go overnight. Uh, it just means a lot of dedication and just really keeping an eye on, on where we're going and understand everyone has that, that has to have that commitment and dedication to always learning more, understanding more, and then working towards, uh, in their own way, um, what reconciliation means. Has your experience as an Indigenous person changed on Gabriola over time, for better or for worse? My, um, my lived experience, my, my, my journey as an Indigenous person, I've always known who I am. Mm -hmm. I've not always been able to comfortably talk about it. Oh. And so I think for me the biggest thing is, is now I am absolutely comfortable in who I am. And I'm absolutely comfortable in speaking to that and being who I am, where that's not always been the case. Um, my, my mom is Mohawk Delaware from the Six Nations, it's where her family's from, and my father is a Scottish settler. And so, for a long, long time, it was always, oh, you're not white enough, oh, you're not indigenous enough, oh, you're not, you're not enough, you're not enough. And this is something that uh, a lot of folks have grown up with, even if you were raised on, you know, within a community, on the reserve or wherever. And it's, it, it's that voice that I find that over the years I've quelled. And being here, um, I have been able to meet other women, other folks um, who have been on that journey. And like, like even Geraldine showing what, what she has experienced is, is something that strengthens me and says, yeah, I have to use my voice and I, I want to use my voice. Um, I am hoping that um, I can put together a once a month potluck for um, all of the folks of different nations, of uh, Indigenous nations who are here on Gabriola. Because we have many, many folks from many, many different nations. And um, it can be very isolating when you're not in your community or you're not in an urban center um, to figure out how to have that connection that you would have uh, if you were with family, if you were with community, with culture and cultural leaders. And so I'm hoping to set that up because I know there are folks who are looking for that and who do need that and there are folks who are wanting to share and, and to, to bring that um, um, to Gabriola for sure.
So. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. You're welcome. You know what?